Well, thank you for joining me today. My name is Donette Douglas. I'll be your host for the next half hour. You are watching A Woman's Joy. I was getting into the words of that song. I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. And that is so true. And it's all because of Jesus Christ. All because of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What he's done in my life. What he's done through my life. And just to know that he is with me every single day. Wow. Wow brings me joy. Amen. Amen. Well, I am looking forward to our interview today. We have a lady that's traveled 15 hours on the airplane, not just to come to a woman's joy, even though that was part of God's plan, but she was in the area and uh, ministering at some area churches. And a friend of hers called and let us know she was in the area. And so we said, we need to have her come and be on a woman's joy. Before I introduce our guest, let's go to our scripture for today from Psalms 16, verse 11. We've used this several times, but it's very, very fitting when someone shares their testimony because they go from dark to light. And all of a mm. sudden that path, <laughs> their life changes. And it says here, thou will show me the path of life. Mm. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I love that. I love it. It says, you will show me. <laughs> will show me. In thy presence is fullness. The fullness of joy. Not just a moment happening, happy time. Fullness of of joy. And as you walk with Lord through the years, you'll find out <laughs> what that fullness of joy means. And then at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Again, not just for this one moment, but forevermore. And I think we're going to hear this same testimony, just like the scripture, come from our guest today. Let's welcome to a woman's joy, Gina Sutherland. From New Zealand. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. good to have you. It's lovely to be here. Tonight. And I'm excited to hear what God has done in your life. But before we get there, we need to know how you come to know Jesus. Yes. You know, some do as a child, some as a teenager, yeah. some older, you know, mm -hmm. when they're older in That's life. That's right. But when did you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Okay. Amen. So Okay, amen. I was in my mid-30s, approximately 36, mm -hmm. and um, I had a special encounter with the Lord when I was about 14 years mm -hmm. of age, but it wasn't until I was about 36 that I was radically saved mm -hmm. on the same night as my husband. Amen. Yeah, and to share with you uh, about me going mm -hmm. from darkness to light, I need to let you know a little bit about my childhood. Yes. Am I able to do oh, that yes, with you? Do we yes, have, please. Yeah, because I don't come from a Christian family, mm -hmm. Donette, nothing at all. And in fact, when I heard the name of Jesus mm -hmm. when I was growing up, it was a swear word. Okay. So nobody in my family apart from me mm -hmm. uh, then w was um, really wanting to find out about God. Mm -hmm. And so my childhood was... Um, a sad, it was very sad. By the time I was about five or six, my mother was already in her third marriage, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, nobody in my family ever went to church. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to go to church. Like I said, mm -hmm. when I heard the name of Jesus, it was usually a swear word. But you know, something in me, even as a little girl, just knew that God was real. Mm -hmm. Even when I was little, you know, I would sit outside on the porch where we lived and I would often look up into the nighttime sky as mm -hmm. a little girl and look up at the stars and look at the sky and just, I just knew that there was a God. Mm -hmm. And um, I often wondered where it all finished. I could say, I would often say to him, where does it finish? How can it just keep going? It must mm -hmm. finish somewhere. But anyway, so as a child, um, I was asked by friends to go to um, Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I can remember meeting a young girl when I was at, uh, in my uh, lower years of high school and even in my primary school. Uh, she took me to a Baptist church. And uh, so I learned a little bit more about 
uh, God there. Then when I was 14 years of age, uh, because I was uh, a good sports person, mm -hmm. I was asked to go to a sporting camp through my high school. Mm. And uh, I don't know who, but one of the staff at the high school uh, said that they would sponsor me to go to this sporting camp. Mm -hmm. And um, so my parents didn't know that it had anything to do with church, so mm -hmm. I was allowed to go. So the short story is, I went to this sporting camp and it was actually a group from, I believe it was from Sacramento, California, mm -hmm. and they were basketballers mm -hmm. and they came specifically to preach the gospel. Wow. So when I was 14 at this sport camp, I heard the gospel. Mm. I do remember receiving Jesus as my Lord. And if I can just say to you that the penny dropped, you know, look, as I said, as a little girl, I mm -hmm. always knew that there was a God, but nobody had shared with me about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I had a revelation about who he was mm -hmm. and what he did for me. Mm. But the issue was I was heading home to a very dysfunctional mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. And I found out many years later that people had tried to follow me up. In fact, a girl who I'd made a friend with um, at, this, at this camp had written me um, letters because she mm -hmm. too was saved. And those letters were hidden. I never mm. even knew that I'd got them. So what happened was I didn't get plugged into church. Mm -hmm. I was 14 then. And so no one could get near me. And so I just kept on living my life without being, without being um, loved. Um, no one taught me about Jesus. And everything faded away. I didn't realize that. So life goes on. Mm -hmm. And um, in my late teens, by then, I had uh, a child. Mm -hmm. I ended up marrying the father of my child, mm -hmm. uh, a beautiful daughter. And then uh, we had a second daughter, but it was a very abusive marriage. Mm -hmm. I was still very young in my late teens, right through my 20s. So I had mm -hmm. two little girls, mm -hmm. uh, still not going to church. Mm -hmm. and I'd actually totally forgotten what had happened to mm -hmm. me back then. And um, when I was in my late 20s, I went and got some help and counseled and, and I was recommended to leave. It was a very, very physically and also psychologically abusive mm -hmm. marriage. I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to do that forever. Yes. Um, but I left just mm -hmm. for my own safety. And so I was on my own. Here I am now in my late 20s mm -hmm. on my own. Uh, a bit older, mm -hmm. a little bit wiser, and I had my two beautiful um, daughters. Yes. And then uh, I met uh, a man, Graham, who's my husband now. Uh huh. And um, I won't go through everything there, but we ended up marrying. Mm -hmm. And after four years, um, after we'd been married four years, um, God just encircled us mm -hmm. with lots and lots of born again Christians. Mm -hmm. And we had our own business and they would come into our business to purchase some things. And um, people were witnessing to us. Now my husband, Graham, he wasn't saved, but he'd grown up in the church. Mm -hmm. He knew all the language, but he wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. And um, so they were around us, witnessing to us, and someone asked us to go to a Pentecostal church. Mm -hmm. And we did. Mm -hmm. And at this stage now, I'm in my 30s. Graham's um, seven and a half years older than me. And we did go to church. And of course, you can maybe understand it was a bit foreign, uh -huh. but yes. the Spirit of God drew us. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit yes. drew us mm -hmm. because it's, it, felt, it felt right. And we went back. Mm -hmm. We went back again. And it would have been approximately five to six services, Donette, that my husband and I sat through. Mm -hmm. And then one night, Mm -hmm. In um, January 1993, mm -hmm. the pastor did what he had done before. Mm -hmm. He um, put out an offer mm -hmm. for anyone who wanted to receive Christ. Yes. And on that Sunday night, unbeknownst to Graham and unbeknownst to me, we, did a, we just made our individual personal commitment to Christ mm -hmm. and we asked Jesus to be our Lord. And mm -hmm. we were radically, radically saved. That was in... January 1993. Wow. So where were you living at then at the time that you and Graham We were living were on the Sunshine Coast, which is in Queensland, um, 
Aussie. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an Aussie, uh -huh. um, Australia, uh -huh. and so I'd been living over there. Graham was living over there. So um, Queensland is a state, and it's on the uh, northeast part. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were living in a beautiful place on the Sunshine Coast, which is north of Brisbane, which is the capital city. And that's where we were, and so that's where we got saved. Okay. So was you born there in Australia then? Yes, I was. Okay. I, yes, okay. I was. So I find that interesting that when you went to the uh, sport camp, mm -hmm. was that in Australia too? Yes, it was. It was south of Brisbane at a place called the Gold Coast. We lived on the Sunshine Coast, uh -huh. which is north, uh -huh. and the Gold Coast is south of Brisbane. So, so it God. was the Gold Coast at a sporting camp. At a sporting camp, yeah. and God sent a group from America. Yep. Yeah. From San Antonio, you say? Sacramento. Oh, Sacramento. Sacramento. California. California. All the way. American basketballers. To tell you about Jesus. And I was Jesus. 14 years of age. Whew. And God knew that I needed to know him. Whew. Yeah. Wow. God, Just God knew my heart. Just think about that. Uh, I know. Well, I, if you're listening out there, people, and, and the enemy's trying to tell you, God don't care about you. <laughs> He knows right where you're at. I'm mm. telling you. Mm. God never moves from us. Amen. We're, Amen. The, we're the ones that distance ourselves from Him. It, the Bible says He never leaves us and He never forsakes us. Amen. And uh, He created us in His image. Mm. That is true. And He saw this little girl, yeah. Gina. Yeah. And He wanted you to know about Jesus. Yes. And He knew, now listen. I don't know, the Holy Spirit's just dropped this in me for some. He knew that Gina was not going to follow him or make that personal commitment for several years later. Yeah, I was 35 or 36. But he still loved Gina enough yeah. to send those people from America yeah. to this sport camp yeah. to tell her about, Jean, to, about Jesus. Jesus. Think about yeah. that. Yeah. That's what, how what, what, what happened was, even though uh, because of what was happening around my family, mm -hmm. I wasn't able to get plugged into church mm -hmm. and grow in Jesus, mm -hmm. I just always had that real knowledge of uh, you know, evil and good and right and wrong, mm -hmm. and it kept me on it. Yes. You know, I wasn't the type of person, I mean, I don't have a testimony yes. that I can say where I was set free of drugs yeah. or set free of this or set free, right. of, free of that. I mean, I just had that inner knowing. And let me just share with you, on the night in 1993 when Graham and I gave our hearts to Christ, let me share with you what actually happened there. Mm -hmm. Something happened. I can remember weeping and going, oh, Jesus, now I know who you are. But do you know what happened? It was like this veil had been moved from yes. across my eyes. I suddenly thought of back then when I was 14 mm -hmm. years of age. I had mm -hmm. no memory of that as I was going through my latter teens mm -hmm. into my 20s. I had totally, totally forgotten it. Mm -hmm. And it was on that night, the Spirit of God through the revelation. I don't know, think, I don't think you can be born, born again again, mm -hmm. but all I know is that I had memory of that moment back mm -hmm. when I was 14 and I thought to myself, oh my Lord, I've been here before. I have asked you into my heart before and it was like a shadow that had just over, overwhelmed me about that moment. But you know what, even though the enemy had tried to take me out of the plan of God, Donette, God always kept me. He knew that when I was old enough to be out of that mm -hmm. situation that I would choose to follow him. I mean, we went home, it was a nighttime sky, Donette, mm. and we went home, we woke up the next morning, and I can say to you that the grass looked greener to me, mm -hmm. the sky looked yes. bluer to me. That day after that Graham and I had woken up mm -hmm. after asking Christ to come into our life, we totally surrendered. We were older and wiser and we meant business. God did and mm -hmm. we also meant business. We knew that we had wasted mm -hmm. so many years apart from him. Mm -hmm. We were radically saved mm -hmm. and we were old enough to get serious about him. No one was going to stop us because we were adults now, mm -hmm. especially me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is important for people to hear because so many times 
Maybe we've been praying for somebody, a spouse or a family member, or maybe you've even shared the Lord with someone. And at the time they said that sinner prayer with you, but then afterwards you didn't see him living that life. That's and right. please don't judge him. That's right. That That's is good. not our place. Yeah. God did not call us to judge. He yeah. is the judge. And we are to love them mm. and share the scripture with them and encourage them in their walk mm. but don't judge them okay because we don't know their heart and that's what God's right. doing that's right but don't give up keep praying for them yes. keep loving them because just as in your case Jesus when he left this earth said and I want to read it from John 14 26 the comforter well I shouldn't say when he did but before he left he yes. shared this but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things yes. and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. That's what happened to me. The Holy That's Spirit. That's exactly what happened to me from 14 to a woman who's now almost 36. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were his. I was. You had said that prayer when you were 14. I was. Not really realizing what you said. None of us really do when we say that sinner's prayer. We mm. don't really realize we, we're, th we're dwelling on the forgiveness of our sins, and that's great because mm. we need to confess them mm. and repent and turn from our e. But then for him to become Lord. Yes. Yes. That's a different thing to let him be Lord of your life. Yes. And that's what yeah. happened. At 14, you confessed your sin. You realized you had sinned. Yes. You needed a savior. Yes, I did. But then you and your husband together. Yes. Realized he was Lord. He was. And yes. we, ha we have, there, there is a difference between savior and Lord. Hey. And then, <laughs> yeah. Amen. Big we difference. have to, we've got to totally surrender. Jesus said that we're to pick up our cross daily if we are to follow him. Yes. You know, I love what you said earlier in John, from John 3, yes. uh, verse 30. He must increase and I must decrease. Yes. That's what we have to do. Yes. yes. And that's what we did. And I can remember when I went home as that young teenager, I remember weeping on the bus going home to mm. my, um, to the, situations that I knew around mm. my family that were not godly and I mm -hmm. wept and I tried to share with uh, my family and my parents what had mm -hmm. happened to me and I was smocked I mean my mother said you've just been brainwashed mm -hmm. and you know that even when she died many many years later I um, uh, followed her up you know because she mm -hmm. didn't because most of my family don't want anything to do with me mm -hmm. and I followed her up when I found out that she was ill and I flew over back over to Brisbane to uh, be with her and I, I, I prayed and mm -hmm. I asked her to please receive Jesus but you mm -hmm. know she wouldn't mm -hmm. she, she just didn't want to know about the Lord and we all have our will and yes. God gives us free mm -hmm. will but you know it's about surrendering Donette as we both yes. know truly surrendering and allowing um, our Savior to become master of our life. Even if he asks us to do certain things, which mm -hmm. is the Bible's filled with it, that the flesh goes, oh, I don't, mm -hmm. don't especially like that. Mm -hmm. But to know that he is my master, he has said it, therefore I'm going to choose to live it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And like I said, love those babes in Christ. Love them. Yeah. Don't judge them and don't say, well, you shouldn't be doing this or doing that. Listen, the Holy Spirit will do that. The Holy Spirit will talk mm. to you. Mm. God will talk to you and he'll show you what's mm. wrong. Now, there are things in the Bible and that's why it's important to read the Bible. Yes. So you know God's will. Yes. And what he likes and agrees with. Yes. And how he wants you to walk with just like that uh, verse I read back there in Psalms. He will show us the path of life. Yes. In his presence is fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. A peace that you can't even understand. Yeah. And at the right hand, and who's sitting at the right hand of God? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And he's everything. Mm. Everything mm -hmm. we need. Mm. They're pleasures forevermore. Yes. Even eternal life. So Eternity. Yes. We've got to keep it yes. in front of us. Yes. So yes. many people... Um, I have found mm -hmm. um, walk through life looking down. Yes. We have to think 
about our future in Jesus. You know, we yeah. who love the Lord, mm -hmm. we are part of a story of the future. When mm -hmm. we learn about our future, mm -hmm. how incredibly supernatural and amazing it's going to be, mm -hmm. it just causes everything that may happen here on earth to fade, just to mm -hmm. um, shrivel up. Yes. Because our future in Jesus is so amazing. Amazing. And, you know, um, I had this um, scripture that I lean mm -hmm. on, Proverbs mm -hmm. 3, verses 5 to 6. We all know it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Yes. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That is something um, that I read often. Yes. And it has kept me when mm -hmm. I have thought that my wisdom and my plans might be um, good, mm -hmm. but the Word of God, um, you know, leads me and the Holy Spirit checks me mm -hmm. and God is saying, no, no, no. I, I just go back to this. So, Gina, don't lean on your own understanding. No. You know, it's in all your ways acknowledge him and yes. he will direct your path and that's how we stay on the narrow Amen. path when we surrender and allow him to be master and lord yes. uh, we have to lean on him we have to die to self daily mm -hmm. we have to understand that our trust has got to be in him not facebook not mm -hmm. our girlfriend no. not our neighbor mm -hmm. our trust has got to be in him yep. through his word Amen. his word is uh, spiritual his Amen. word will um, grow us. Mm -hmm. The word of God will transform us. And Amen. I know that you and I mm -hmm. um, hopefully mm -hmm. can sit here and, and, and say to people out there that we're not the same women no. um, uh, now that we were even mm -hmm. two years ago or five years ago or ten years yeah. ago. Well, why is that? Why is that? It's because we allow our Savior to be our Lord. Amen. We trust him. And we let him lead us. Amen. Amen. And we are, we are transformed th uh, through the renewing of our mind mm -hmm. to someone that we're not. You know, when I shared at the church that I um, spoke at on Sunday, I said, to, I said this to them, that he can take everything you are and change you into someone you never thought that you could be. That's for sure. Donette, when I was a younger person, even a younger woman, a younger daughter in the Lord, I had fear all around me. There were lots of things from my childhood that needed to be healed, mm -hmm. that needed to be cut off. Mm -hmm. I had fear all around me. I mm. truly did. I would never have been able to sit here mm. uh, with you now yes. like I am now talking. I mm -hmm. would have said no if somebody had asked me to do this. Mm -hmm. But it's through being transformed, mm -hmm. letting Jesus be my Lord and Father, yes. he's, he's our Father. He's a good, good Father. Mm -hmm. Trusting His Word, and then you, one day, just realize who you really are. Mm -hmm. You're a daughter or a son mm -hmm. of the King of Kings, mm -hmm. who's coming back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 You know, God is so good. He loves us. He takes such wonderful care of us. And you know, as Getting to know Him. <laughs> That's why I That's encourage thing. people That's the to thing. read this Word of God yes. every single day. Yes. Just draw close to Him. Talk to Him. <clears throat> Just like I'm talking to you or talking yeah. to Gina. Yeah. I, I talk to God. In fact, I tell people laughingly, if they'd walk by my apartment, sometimes they'd wonder <laughs> who I'm talking to. But he, He's my best friend. Yes. He's my best friend, Amen. my Savior, yes. my Hallelujah. Lord. And whatever I need, if I need peace, I know I can get in this Word of God. I read the Psalms a lot. Yeah, I can so get in I. there. You know, the I Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm. I shall not want, mm. he says. I mm. shall not. Mm. I don't have to want. Mm. I don't have to have a need. Mm. I don't have to feel alone. Mm. I don't have to be depressed or hopeless. Amen. Yeah, Amen. he'll be there for me. He's Amen. promised. Amen. I would love to go back to something that you said before about mm -hmm. not judging the hearts of people. Yes. You know, like you've the um, you know people have heard that I was a fourteen-year-old mm -hmm. and then I was a, almost a thirty-six-year-old. Yeah. Um, that is so true because see, the word teaches us that we are to judge the fruits of people's lives, mm -hmm. but not to judge the heart. Only God knows the heart yes. of a person. And it's so true what you say. If people are, are stumbling in their walk, it's only he who knows their heart. Yes. We're not to judge the heart. And when I look back, I realize that 
God knew my heart yes. at 14 years of mm -hmm. age and he knew that when I was a woman, mm -hmm. when I could grow and mm -hmm. make my own choices yes. about him, that I would truly surrender. Amen. And he kept me. Look, there were so many, you, so many times, Donette, during my marriage when I was being physically abused, I could have been um, so, uh, so badly hurt. Mm -hmm. And I just look back and I know, but I mm -hmm. know that my Lord was with me. He had angels around Amen. me. Amen. And um, so I just want to really encourage people out there who may have uh, children, mm -hmm. they may have loved ones, they may mm -hmm. have friends, and um, you know, they're looking at the fruits of their life yes. and they're not really good. It's what they can do is pray pray and if they feel like they can't say any more to these mm -hmm. precious people mm -hmm. you pr they should pray and ask the Lord to bring brothers and sisters yes. to intercept their path yes like when God had brothers and, and, mm -hmm. and like people all um, circling mm -hmm. us when we were um, wanting to seek God because you see yeah. I got into a little bit of new age because I was spiritually well, seeking. Ah, can I was we spiritually can, seeking. Uh -huh. Can we continue that on the next show? We can. Because our time's about out so we want to start there don't let me forget but I just want to encourage you to love the Lord because he loves you and you know my daughter the enemy's always trying to tell her oh you're not saved you're not saved. I said to her Jody when you asked Jesus into your heart did you mean it? She said yes. I said, okay, that settles it. Yeah. You know you meant it in your heart. Amen. So you just walk with God each day, fall down, get back up, repent of your sin, get in the Word, read it some more, spend more time in prayer. Be sure that you have a Bible preaching church that you're connected with, that yes. you're part of the family there. And become a part of the family, okay? You reach out because God has um, things, uh, how do I want to say, ministry that he wants you to minister to others mm. through you. You know, it's not always you go there to receive. Sometimes God uses you to impart into other people's Amen. lives. So I'm looking forward to next week to the second part of our interview here with Gina Sutherland. And uh, I'll tell you, God is good. Just God like you said. Good. And he is a good, good father. He is. A good, good Amen. father. Amen, he is. Amen. So again, I just want to encourage you, and if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you just bow your head right there, confess you have sinned, and ask Him to come in to your heart and be your Lord and Savior, and He'll do it. Till next week. God bless. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin. No rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend. All my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy.